But before I read some poetry in this book, I want to give a bit of a background for its origins. Deep in the Valley goes back further than is, is clear in the book. It goes back to the 80s when my niece Katrina Keane attended the Adelaide Art School with her partner Damon Moon, Australia's well-known potter, Milton Moon's son, who these days is a wonderful potter and an amazing writer in his own right. But Katrina begged me to write with the handbook where she was learning to throw. And I didn't call myself a poet back then, I was just learning to write, and I still am by the way. But she did. And she used to call me her crazy aunt. And if she was alive today, she'd be sure to do that today. And I know a lot of you would call me that anyway, as nice as possible, right? <laughs> I am a bit crazy and I like it. In 1993, I shared a writer's in residence at the Arthur Boyd's Riverdale um, homestead at the Shoalhaven with camera visual art with Cheryl Jobs. Put your hand up, Cheryl Jobs. <laughs> okay, and Lorda Crane. And I was collaborating and creating cross art even as far back as then. <clears throat> cross art is what we call ekphrastic work if it's created with um, visual art. But I'm inclined to think this term can be linked um, quite loosely with a variety of uh, forms. And Cheryl wanted to exhibit this, our work at um, Strathnam Gallery. And that was where I met Fergus Stewart. And, I, and when we came back to do the ex, uh, exhibition, I found him. Um, I found him sitting on the lawn at Strathnan trimming pots, and I realised he made travel wear the same thing as Katrina did, and that he also liked to talk about all things artistic the way she did, <coughs> and our friendship was forged. <coughs> Fergus's pots to me are innovative. They're also practical. He's not a potter who engages in experimental ceramics. It, which is work I admire. I mean, I admire all this work here in the um, gallery and what's been around for the Triennial um, Ceramic Celebrations. I hope that some of you got to see it because there's some magnificent work around. Is it still on, Sarah? The, the, most of the exhibition find it on that closing. A closing now, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by practical, Fergus doesn't create pots that infer death, love, hate um, at all. He hasn't. Um, he has nothing to do with Isis, who Abbott tells us are coming to get us, and therefore perhaps he should. Fergus makes domestic wares, often the same shape and form, but he perfects it time and time again. And his, pot, his pots talk about the extraordinariness of the ordinary moment, the moment in this Russian scurry world today that the Japanese potters and poets have made and written about for centuries, that aha moment we overlook because we're more present with our iPad, iPod, phone, computer, computer, Twitter and Facebook. What's out there before our very eyes to be touched and seen is overlooked for the latest and the newest. They must have because it's different and therefore must be better and better. And Fergus and I talked about this in his wheel for what seemed centuries, but was in fact two decades. Katrina had similar rays with me back there in the 80s. Milton Moon, who's also, who also wrote the afterword for this book, said Fergus is a real potter. And when I asked him what he meant by that, his reply was, Fergus earns his living by, by what he throws. He was in awe of what Fergus does. And the fact that Fergus is not here to share the triangle ceramic celebrations and the launch of this book says a lot about the little financial reward a potter gets for being a real potter today. And the same applies for real poets as well. Um, there is little financial reward for being a full-time potter or a poet in Australia, and it's getting worse. As artists, we do this because of who we are, and that is what we do. And what I've tried to capture in this book is Milton's understanding of the real potter's hard work today. I just want to say um, that I chose Tanka deliberately, as, as um, Meredith has pointed out, uh, for the Deep in the Valley of Tea Bowls, because this is the form that was used in the tea ceremony and goes so well with tea bowls and tableware that Fergus creates and inspired me um, enough to sit at his wheel the same way as I did to write this book. But had he not passed on the information, um, this book, book would never have been written. I found myself sitting there with a master potter day after day. He would go to the, um, uh, across the road from the chalet where I was staying with him to the Highland um, um, 
sorry, potters, and he would throw to earn money there every morning, and then I would pay for lunch, and we'd go off to his studio every afternoon with his little pot belly stove, wherever Fergus goes, there's mm -hmm. a pot belly stove somewhere, <laughs> and he'd put on the blues, and we would um, talk in the gallery, and um, I knew that I would be the envy of many uh, potters if they could have you know, taken my place. And he passed on so much information to me, and that is what I've tried to capture uh, in this work um, as well. And I just want to say, if you're counting syllables for tanka, and indeed most English modern tanka is, is written today, you are not, uh, they are not written with the same amount of syllables or sound units in which the Japanese write their tanka, which is 57577. This is not because I'm being slapdash or anything goes, but because the word in English is one syllable less than when it's expressed in Japanese. We say tanka, which is two syllables, and the Japanese use three sound units, which is ta, n, ka. So you can see it's impossible to write the 57577 form. And I hear a lot said, it's not tanka because it doesn't have the syllable of ka. Um, but there's so much more to tanka than that, so much more. As um, Meredith said, it's a very, very simple form, but it's a simply, it's a very deceptively simple form. However, even though I specialise in tanka, I wrote this free verse poem for Fergus in the first years when I first met him, and it was published in Australian Ceramics in 1994, but he insisted that it be included in the book, so I'll read it for you. Mm. Teapot and Cats for Fergus. The clay settles in sockets like yellow cat's eyes. You shape forms that purr from a place older than your youthful hands. And the wheel turns inward, turns clay into questions. Two lines slash its surface, and you say it breaks it up. And the wheel turns outward, scars points of focus. Wood fired uncertainty, you claw a living in your studio where pots prowl at the back of your mind. And like poetry, there's always that dramatic moment that's captured. And the drama for me is in the wood kiln, the firing. I have actually become a junkie to wood fire kilns, um, thanks to Fergus. Um, it's the best party out, actually. And so I'm going to read just a sequence of the tanka that's here in the middle of the book here um, about the kiln. I'll read them twice because they're tanka. Can Christmas gifts wrapped under the tree can bear with a kiln cool enough to open brick by brick? Can Christmas gifts wrapped under the tree compare with a kiln cool enough to open brick by brick? <laughs> Pots fired ready in the kiln shouting, look at me, look at me. Were my children any different? Pots ready in the kiln shouting, look at me, look at me. Were my children any different? Open mouthed, the kiln not always speaking of perfect pots. He lives this one, that, searching for words. Open mouthed, the kiln not always speaking of perfect pots. He lives this one, that, searching for words. The potter, a mentor she seeks. The cup, handle, distorted in the kiln, his. The potter, a mentor, she seeks. The cup, handle, distorted in the kiln, his. Even the best of friends disagree. He'll listen later, as best he can, to pots with little to say. Even the best of friends disagree. He'll listen later, as best as he can, to pots with little to say. This is David Terrence's favorite. They linger in the corner of the kiln, tea bowls glazed in deeper hues, smoke the colour of sorrow. They linger in the corner of the kiln, tea bowls glazed in deeper hues, smoke the colour of sorrow. Does it get harder or easier each firing to trash distorted pots and finally cracked dreams? Does it get harder or easier each firing to trash distorted pots and finally crack dreams. <laughs>